My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a very good morning to all of you. It is a great pleasure and honor for us to have this wonderful opportunity to visit you here in this prestigious university with a large popula Christian population. This morning, you yeah, almost feel the Grand Chapel here this morning. My heartiest gratitude for your warm welcome and hospitality. We bring you our warmest greeting from Sabbath Theological Seminary and would like to express our thankfulness for your prayers and for your partnership. STS was the first ever Malaysia Theological Seminary to use the Malay language, which is the national language, as its medium of instruction, bringing theological education and church leadership development to local churches and a huge number of Malay-speaking indigenous churches in Malaysia. STS is now 35 years old. We are the much younger sister compared to the PUTS, almost three times, you see, uh, of our age. Because PT, PUTS is 120 years, we are only 35 years. It's a young brother. And since courses began in 1988, we have trained more than 5,000 people in our Malay, Chinese, and medium-speaking departments. These graduates are now scattered across Malaysia, Southeast Asia, China, and other parts of the world, serving the Lord in different variety of denomination and communities. For your information, this year we have 2,400 students in our regular and long regular study program. Brothers and sisters, leadership development for the indigenous churches in Sabah is not an optional choice, but an imperative task in view of the indigenous Christian, is the majority of the Christian community in the country. The indigenous brothers and sisters comprise almost 85% of the total Christian population in Malaysia. So neither the Basel Christian Church of Malaysia, where I come from, nor the STS can do the job alone. We hope our overseas partners, especially our Korean churches, the PUTS, would walk with us in the common endeavor of church leadership development in Malaysia. Let me briefly share with you about the important role of theological education. What is theological education? Theological education is not an elite vocational belonging only to the professional. It is not an abstract philosophical concept, nor a theory about, a theory about God. Theological education is about people and their relationship with God, the relationship between fellow human beings and issues in relationship to their livelihood. So to say, theological education is an education about God and human being. Theology is a story about God and human being. So theological education intends to teach people by arousing 
their awareness in issues and social problems in their life, and to teach the people to take care of this issue or the social problems in accord to the love and compassion shown in the incarnation of Christ, so that they can be delivered, the students, the believers, through theological education, can be delivered from their difficulties and gain hope. Theological education is an education of love. I used to say it. Theological education is an education of love because its mission is to teach God's given and sacrificial love for the people and for the world. Faith without love doesn't help anyone. Hope without love is nothing. Jesus Christ has set a good example for us. The Bible we have just read, when the man are show, he saw a great, a great crowd and he had great compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. It's written in Marcus chapter 6, verse 34. When Jesus, when he saw the, com the condition of the human being, his heart was pierced and had compassion on the people. And he began teaching them many things. This is indeed a theological education model. So the task of theological education is to assist pastors and believers to truly know the Lord Jesus Christ and the words of God, the Bible, so that they can be liberated and transform the identity crisis of the community. So they can be liberated from their own identity crisis and then to transform the identity crisis of the community by the power of the gospel and the Holy Spirit with action in love. Brothers and sisters, the relative in John chapter 4 about the dialogue between Jesus Christ and the Samaritan woman is very inspirational in how gospel liberates a person from an identity crisis. Jesus Christ demonies the barriers between Jews, the Jews and the Samaritan. And he extended his loving care to this Samaritan woman who was despised and rejected by the Jews. In the dialogue with the Samaritan woman, Jesus ratified her problems, her problem in life and her crisis in self-identification. Jesus said to this woman, go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. But Jesus said to him, you are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom you, are, whom you now have is not your husband. Subsequently, Jesus ratified, Jesus liberated and transformed the life at the identity crisis of this woman. The Bible said many, the life of the woman was transformed. The life of the woman was transformed. And later on, he became the liberator and transformer of other people. The Bible said, many Samaritan women from the city believed in Jesus Christ 
because of the woman's testimony. What is he, her testimony? He said to the people, Come, see, he told me everything I ever did. Brothers and sisters, the relative of the Samaritan is, very, is a very good revelation for theological education and for preaching the gospel, which is to transform the role of the believers, of the speakers, of the students, of the believers and the students, or the people, so that they can, in turn, transform others. Theological education in Sabah. There are about 600 Protestant indigenous Christians in Sabah. The indigenous churches, their brother and sister, who are mostly the first generation Christian, young Christian, have a lot of life problem and identity crisis. Why? Because they are lacking in the knowledge of God. Pleasantly, among these 600 believers, only 400, 240 pastors who are holding BTH, which means the first degree in theology, are serving this big amount of Christian population in the indigenous churches. Consequently, one pastor has to take care of more than 2,200 indigenous Christian members, and they are scattered in uh, different small villages, you see. So obviously, the church in Sabah is in serious need of many more suitably trained pastors. A short test, at least 2,000 pastors, based on a recommended proportion of about one pastor to 200 Christian members. So this serious shortfall has prompted the seminary to an even greater awareness of the urgent need for more pastoral workers to be trained with knowledge, with skills, and with spiritual formation necessary for the growing church in a challenging society. Why I say challenging society? Especially, you know, people know, Malaysia is an Islamist country. So human resource development in our country, I think in all over the world, is extremely important for the church. We are not only have to train more pastoral workers, but there is a need to develop leaders among the leaders to develop leaders of the pastor, that these better developed leaders can provide vision and broader knowledge to lead the church to encounter the political and religious strategy from the country, especially from the country, that anti-Christian development. SDS is also providing training in community development and also counseling, communication, and social work. This investment in education will definitely contribute to the formation of healthy mind, spirit, and culture for the well-being of the nation and society. In conclusion, I would like to read to you one verse taken from John chapter 6, 15. It is written, 
Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Brothers and sisters, theological education must withdraw from the power and influence of the world, from the secular world, from the value system of the world, and to see transform into a role of servant and neighbor. Korean churches, Korean brother and sister, you are our neighbors. Jesus Christ withdrew to the mountain by himself. This verse brings much light because withdrawal is the source for wisdom and impetus. Jesus withdrew to the mountain not only because he did not approve the identity crisis of the people, but also for a more important reason. It is to pray. Pray can change this thing. Only prayer can change the life of the people. So prayer and Christian identity complement one another. Prayer can transform people's identity crisis. The lack of prayer will result in no vision for God's kingdom and no vision for mission. Let me say it again. The lack of prayer will result in no vision for God's kingdom and no vision, vision for mission, no wisdom for mission. I'm very impressed this few days, the last 10 days. Whenever I visit, I see Korean churches, Korean brothers and sisters praying very hard. You spend a lot of time to pray to God. That's where the wisdom, the vision come from. Korean churches become revised, and you have a lot of missionary, you see, all over the world. Brother and sister, we have a lot to learn from you. Jesus, even Jesus, has the need to pray to God how much we, churches, seminary, we have to come to God to pray in order to gain wisdom and strength so that our theological education can play an effective role of life transformation. So may God grant us POTS, STS, Korean and Malaysia, vision and wisdom for our common endeavor in the human development ministry for his kingdom, for God's kingdom. Finally, may I, together, especially Chairman of the Board, President Wun, to take this opportunity to extend our sincere invitation, President, and your faculty, if it is possible, do come to attend our 33rd Double three, graduation ceremony on the 4th and the 5th of November. We look forward for your guidance, for your partnership, for your wisdom, and for your vision to walk with us in the leadership development in Malaysia. Thank you very much. May God bless. Amen. Mm -hmm.